Hello, everyone. These days, more and more venues are implementing a double blind review system. So what does this mean and how we can make sure that our paper respects this double blind requirement so that it can actually can be reviewed and not desk rejected. So this is what we are going to discuss in this video. I'm going to also provide a list of items that you need to follow in order to make sure that your paper is in double blind format in the description below. And before we start, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to spread this content to as many students as possible. First, let's understand what it means to have a double blind review system. So generally, when you submit a paper, you do not know who are the reviewers that review your paper. And so this is called the single blind review system. However, in a double blind review system, the authors do not know who are the reviewers, but also the reviewers do not know who are the others. However, there are many ways in which in a paper you could reveal, even accidentally, who are the others of the paper. And so in this video, I'm going to provide a set of suggestions that are very useful to follow to prevent, to violate the double blind review requirement. The first step to avoid revealing the name of the others is just to do not put the name of the others in the heading of the paper. Sometimes this space is left blank. Sometimes you can write anonymous others. In any case, you don't want to mention the names of the others of the paper. However, it may happen that even if you do not put the names of the others, you could still reveal the identities of the others, for example, citing your own work and referring to your own work as in our previous work, we did this. So in that case, you're violating the double blind review policy. So what you should do in that case is to refer to your own work in a third person. So basically as if someone else wrote that paper. This may, however, not necessarily be enough because sometimes your work may be an extension of a previous work and the similarities are so strong that it's very obvious that you are the author of that paper. So in that case, what you can do additionally is to also anonymize the reference. And you can say the reference is anonymized because of the double blind review policy. Another way of revealing who the others are is by acknowledging people, universities, grants, or any other entity that might have helped you in the paper. So the acknowledgments is generally a section of the paper that you remove at the time of submission and that you add after the paper is accepted when you submit the camera ready. Sometimes it may also happen to reveal the affiliation of the others accidentally when the name of the affiliation, for example, appears in, let's say, some project classes or some diagrams that you are using in the paper. So make sure that also those parts that generally are not as obvious and not as straightforward to think about are also anonymized. So you can just change the name of those classes just in the image at the time of submission and then change it back again once the paper is accepted. The experimental section is another section where you could accidentally reveal the identity of the others or at least the affiliation of the others. And this may happen, for example, when you have some sort of test bed or physical location where you have validated your approaches. And then, for example, you say what this location is. So you need to make sure that even in the experimental section, everything is anonymized. You can even say the explicitly, we remove the location due to the double blind review policy, because sometimes actually knowing that location may be a useful information to understand the quality of the paper, but you cannot do that when the double blind review system is in place. So make sure to check the experimental section as well. Finally, you also need to make sure not to add links to some content that may reveal yourself. Something that may happen relatively often is to reveal some code that you have published, for example, through a GitHub link. But then when you follow that GitHub link, you can clearly understand who is the author and then also who is the author of the paper. So make sure that these links are either not present and you can anonymize them, or if you think they are very important for the review of the paper, you can either warn the reviewers saying that by following this link would reveal the name of the others, or alternatively, you can just make sure that that link does not reveal the name of the others. But my suggestion in this case is just to anonymize the link, remove it from the submission, and then add it again once the paper is actually published. So the last thing I want to mention is that the reviewer is not supposed to be a detective. So the reviewer is not supposed to look for clues that are hidden somewhere that may reveal who you are. 
However, we need to make sure to follow everything that we have said in this video so that we are not going to make obvious to the reviewer who the authors of the paper are, but at the same time, don't be afraid that the reviewer is going to do an investigation in order to find out who you are. So I hope this was useful and that you're not going to have any problem submitting double blind review papers. And please, if you like this content, like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you at the next video.